حور العين تناديني فدعيني أما هدعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن ضربي لا لن تثنيني حور العين تناديني فدعيني أما هدعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن ضربي لا لن تثنيني السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله إن شاء الله بالاستاذ اللهم امين اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء فسبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري Wahlo lo da tam mili sani yaf ka hu kauli. Shall we continue our class on the topic of Islam and Muslims in the modern world and challenges faced by youths? One of the other issues apart from we discussed last was in relationship to same-sex relationships. Now we're going to another important issue. that is very pertinent in our society today in relationship to our youths and their relationship towards drugs and alcohol. That is one of the challenges we face today with our youths, apart from the elders who drink alcohol and use drugs and so on, we're talking about the situation with the youths and why and how and what are the reasons and the condition that surround them today. Today, you know, many violent actions are being seen in schools, on the streets, and so many crim crimes are being committed by our youths. And we should ask ourselves uh, why, maybe for example, say, uh, why it's, we, our youths have become so violent. And we relate it to many things. We relate it to the use today of phone, and they see more graphic materials, and they see more danger in terms of shows and movies, and The way things have been acted out, things what was scary long ago was one of the most scariest movies in the times the, that have gone before today. That like watching a, a kid show. So the fear and the, the, the introduction of the danger today in, in television, introduction and, the, and, the, and the, in, that, in that way that we actually look at movies today, it does have an impact. A subliminal message that is brought out in the minds of our children as well. But there is also this very dangerous element of alcohol and drugs. Alcohol and drugs is far worse a chemical and destruction to our children and even watching the movies and, and listening to food. What comes out of alcohol and drugs is far greater danger. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and tells us, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 90, he says, <coughs> in this ayat he says, Ya yuha alladhina amanu, innama al-khamru, that all you who believe, certainly, wine, wal maysar and gambling, wal ansabu, and worshipping stones while as lamb when casting lots rid summina shaitan that these are what Allah that the shaitan use as a means to distract and destroy men women children homes and communities in the world today these things are common and registered as being common in our society today. You know, if we ask from our thinking, you know, when we look at drugs and alcohol, what it is mentioned in this ayat of Quran, that Allah SWT has mentioned that these things are from shaitan, min amal shaitan. And then he says to us, these things, fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. Keep away from these things. Stay away from these things. Perhaps, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ You will have success. Stay away from it. If we examine our society today, 
in general as to what is amongst us and the dangers that is here and existing amongst us. We only have to ponder like what we talking about drugs, what kind of drugs? Alcohol in the time <clears throat> when the Prophet was part of this foundation of the deen and the establishment of the deen before this, the Sahabas who were the then people of Makkah, what was their life? Alcohol was their normal way. They used to consume alcohol in a great deal and proportions. But when Islam came into life, they still were using alcohol. They were still consuming alcohol. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran to them, the ayat of Quran, do not come to salah fis sukara, that when you are intoxicated, when you are drunk. So before the establishment of the had and the law of prohibition on alcohol, it was in the Quran and it is mentioned in the Quran, the ayat was never repealed or taken away out of the Quran, it is still existing in the Quran concerning alcohol, that in alcohol, the, the good that is in it, as opposed to that which is bad, the bad far outweighs the good. There is nothing good in it basically, they say that it is far outweighs it. So there is no benefit in it, that is before it was actually made prohibited. In understanding this ayat of Quran, we have to firstly come to what is meant here. That the Sahabas, they came to Salat like this. It is not something simple to stop or to just lock off alcohol and just get rid of alcohol. Especially today in our society when it has become absolutely a situation where it is available at all times. Today in homes, in homes. Children, Muslim homes, they talk about non-Muslim homes, they talk about some Muslim homes. The children are placed in the environment where their parents have alcohol on display that they use a drink casually in their homes. And then the children themselves try drinking it and they drink within their, their home and there is no what? Objection as they grow older. And the parents say nothing. So it becomes part of it. And even in the non-Muslim homes, it is also prevalent that alcohol has been and continues to be a common thing amongst the community and the society and the world at large today. Alcohol is the number one user amongst drugs today now which has become popular. <coughs> when we look at it, if we say what are some of the drugs today, there are many which we will discuss in a smaller but let's firstly look at what is mentioned in the danger concerning alcohol. In the time of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells of a situation where someone comes and asks him, you know, and telling him, you know, what is, what is alcohol and wine? You know, that is something simple as like grape juice, date juice, made from different types of fruits. In fact, in Trinidad in the early days, when alcohol was introduced to Trinidad, in Trinidad, it was from what? Sugar cane. Sugar cane was the foundation when they used to make alcohol. It was sugar cane and, and became a popular business still today. That we use that as a means of making alcohol. So, Abu Huayra and you know, when they came to me, I said, well, that's just juice, grapes, dates. You know, these are just simple things to make juice with. What is what could be so wrong if I just put and stir for a little while and it's fermented and it, you know, you drink it? Is the same juice? So Abu Huayra the Allah Ta'ala says, okay, no problem. He says, look at this. He takes some water and he throws it on the person. You say, you feel anything? You say, no, you just feel like it's a little wet. He takes some straw and throws it on the person. He says, you feel anything? No, he said, that's just straw. Then he takes some sand and throws it on him. He says, you feel anything? No, he said, I just feel a little sprinkler of sand. Then he takes a block and hit him one on the head. He says, you feel anything? Sure feel it that time. 
He said, well, that's just only sand, water, and some straw combined together, big for a while, and they make a block. That's all it is. So the difference is what? When it goes through the process, what is the end result? This water by itself and the straw and the sand is nothing. But when it's formed into a block, then you really what? Then you feel it. But before it has no effect. So he, should, so he wanted to understand what was the effect. So he felt the effect. What it really means to utilize it in that manner. Alcohol is worse than the block. Because it's more dangerous than that. When we look and understand what is happening in our society today, and we, and we look at and, and all the dangers that is there, we have to ask ourselves, what is really this alcohol and the danger within alcohol from what the Quran is telling us and what society is telling us? So let's read into what this said. It says that the misuse of drugs and alcohol amongst people today, what, what is really that about? What is really that amounts to? That there was disagreements about whether young people were victims or villains some blame the young for antisocial behavior drinking alcohol violence and other gun and knife crime one said that young people have no manners and so many things you'll hear in relationship to youths right they blame it on all different kind of things you know bad manners do all different things that's why youths behave like that we the different lifestyle we tell them that different lifestyle so we, we, we try to palm off the problem or put the problem on other issues, as you would say. But the real cause is what it is, is we have seen the very damaging condition of our society today, chiefly because of the link to violent crimes and antisocial behavior because of substance abuse and alcohol. That is the key of the problem. Substance abuse and alcohol, as defined as the cause of the ill health, poverty, and family that are in a state of shatter and are broken. And in that state, we see that communities have now become weakened because of this child abuse, domestic violence, poverty, stress, unemployment, lack of opportunity. These all stem from two things, drugs and alcohol. We could also blame the politicians and we could blame the parents and we could blame everybody else. But when we look at where it comes from, what is destroying the society amongst it is these two things. These may be considered as contributing factors, but there is something that is of utmost importance that is missing. That is leading our children in the direction and that is no connection to Allah when it comes to it. And this is what we have to understand here. That in the time of Rasulullah, when this command came, that firstly they won't go to Salah when they, the ayat came, that they shouldn't go in Salah when they are drunk. But when the ayat and the verse came, that they should do what? Alcohol has been made prohibited. When Sahabas, this ayat came and the news started to spread amongst the companions. Some of them who had alcohol in their mouths, they spit it out and vomit out whatever was ever within them. They destroy every single container that they would have with alcohol and not keep that bottle or that container, as you see, within themselves, or within their property, within their homes. They destroyed everything because they had put the deen and Allah's command above everything else. And alcohol became prohibited. But it didn't destroy, or it was, there's no need or there was no desire to have it anymore once they had Allah in their life. So the fear of the use of alcohol became not because of policing or policing and having any extensive laws established except the law of Allah. Today, in society, all the laws you can make concerning alcohol and you're driving you do a breathalyzer test and they'll charge you if you have so much amount of this al alcohol found in your system then they will charge you a fine for drinking and driving you know that but 
you know, you can understand how, how ridiculous or how, how we could say that this law is so strange if you know you're going to charge somebody for drinking. Drinking and driving. You know, why make such a law? Who benefits from that such a law? Wouldn't it be better to say a person should not drink and drive, even though that was the advertisement for it. But still, now you're putting something in place that you shouldn't go amongst this particular level in drinking. Who stands to benefit and who stands to loss? Just bear that in mind when it comes to alcohol. Who stands to benefit and who stands to lose and loss in the sale and the distribution and the drinking of alcohol? In society today, when you consider what the Sahaba stopped because of Iman, belief, that made a difference. And that is also a distinction in our society today. That Iman amongst the Ummah has also eroded in many Muslim countries. Many Muslim countries. So-called Muslim countries, everyone see it as well. They have alcohol. And all the different types of vices that you think about existing amongst them in the underground, in the underworld. Within themselves. When the fear of the Ummah should be what? Allah. And deterring them from what? Going against the command of Allah. But there is the influence amongst the people in society that is actually sending and distributing and all these things. Because it just doesn't come just like that in a country. In other words, people know who is who in every street and in every corner and every block and in every building. Who is who and what is happening in these environments. And most people stay quiet. What is really the situation here with our children? Understand what, the, what is happening even in North America and different parts of the world, for example. That we see, as the ayat mentioned concerning this, and we look at the, what is the, the statistics and the facts of society today, that 68% of children in, who are teenagers in the United States and North, North America, what they use? Alcohol, they have consumed alcohol. At least 68% of them have at least consumed some level of alcohol in their life already, being teenagers. Now that is not a small percentage. That is 68%. And it tells us that even from that age, they go on using it some monthly, at least 37% have used it regularly on a monthly basis. And others use it at different levels in their life. At some other point in time, they, they mentioned that some of them who actually smoke and utilize marijuana up to 35% in within teenage at that level utilizes drugs. Young people. And there are statistics that goes on and tells us of the different amounts that they use, whether it's within a month, within a week, how much you use within a week. You know, some of them, they try it out for a first time, and some of them actually try it out, not try it out, they're using it monthly, weekly, daily, as daily doses. These things represent, and look, and you look at it, it tells you that within our education system, from primary, secondary, and tertiary, there is a danger. Even in our own society here in Trinidad, we see in primary schools, in secondary schools, in the universities, alcohol and drugs is there. And it is being utilized. And we're talking about just one school, almost every school. And in each school, these children who are there, there are some of them whose parents are the drug pushers. Within the school, they are there and they are parents who are like that. Let's look for example <clears throat> within our society in our own country. Let's imagine amongst the Muslims we have 100 about 10 or 13 or 14 massages in the country. From the junction here till we reach the masjid here you know how many rum shops or bars there are? A minimum of 8. In the country itself, there are over 1,000 bars and rum shops. You know, I talk about 1,000, not 100, not 200, 300, 1,000 serving 
this, this place. You can imagine what we're talking about, the danger of what is happening to us. Every street, every street, every corner that you look out of, in every community that you live in, there's one person selling drugs. There's one person selling marijuana and cocaine, drugs. And that's here. In every other part of the world, they are utilizing drugs. I'm talking to our kids, our children, in parts of the world where it is so rampant and so dangerous, when you look at it, that in schools, nearly 44% of high school students know their classmates who might be selling drugs. They know people, children know in school who are selling drugs. Right? You can ask a child if they, could, if they could get access to drugs, they say yes. It's easy for them to get access to drugs and alcohol. It is nothing new to them. The average statistic in England and Wales of people who consume cocaine, you're talking about alcohol, alcohol is way beyond the percentage of what we're talking about here. Cocaine, the use of cocaine, over 850 thousand people use cocaine as a choice of drug and alcohol is in the millions this is the nature of what the society has it today in North America South America all over the world alcohol and drugs is in the millions of people. Billions, you could say. That is the nature of what we are facing before ourselves today. So, when we look at it, that even within that same society in, in England and Wales, over 3,756 people die out of just using and ingesting drugs. In 2017, and that number keeps increasing every year. We talk about the danger of things, you know, like what war would cause and other things would cause. But when you look at the effects of alcohol and drugs and death and de damages and, and loss that comes out of it, if you look at what is more dangerous, is the 1,000 rum shops plus in Trinidad is more dangerous than anything else. And if we examine ourselves and ask ourselves that particular, you know, knowing that, that this is the level of how alcohol, how drugs is being utilized in our society at this level. You know, that there is a theory amongst people, you know, that tells us, you know, that alcohol today in society, they don't consider it to be a danger, you know, they consider it to be a disease. Some people consider alcohol to be a disease. So they have Alcohol associations for anonymous people so that could actually treat with the disease like that. There are different environments in, in, in where you actually have centers developed for to treat people with alcohol and the, the, the outcome of utilizing alcohol and what is the danger that is derived from it. So if we look at what has happened is that this, the disease or the theory of alcoholism simply put as a disease. The disease theory of alcoholism contends that alcohol addiction is a disease of the brain that changes the way a person thinks, feels, and behaves. So we understand what we're saying here. We're saying that alcohol, and understand this is in particular to our children as well, what is happening? What is a simple thing? that They're saying it is a disease that affects the way you feel, the way you think, and the way you function. What does the Quran tell us when a person drinks alcohol? And what did the professor Salman tell us about a person drinking alcohol? That when a person consumes alcohol, when a person consumes alcohol, what is the effect of it? It is like running through your veins. The shaitan starts to run through your vein. The effects of it is that it affects your blood. So when something affects your blood, where do you think it affects the most at one point in the way your blood goes? To your heart. 
then it affects where the blood travels to your brain. It affects every single limb that it attaches to. Every movement becomes what? Affected from alcohol. The science is saying this, but the Quran has already told us about these effects way before that. That shaitan takes control of it. He takes control. This is what shaitan uses to destroy the human being. This is what shaitan used to destroy the believers. It is one of his best weapons. Alcohol. You know what people and children use alcohol for? You know why they make a good excuse for using alcohol and it says a disease? Boy, I stress out. Boy, I'm tired. I, I, I can't handle this no more. And then they go at the rum shop, the bar, and they drink it out. But you think the problem solved? What did alcohol do to resolve that issue? And it happens to our children because this is what they test out of fun. Some of them do because they get in the environment and the individuals who are around them as peers, as relationship, who they share this and will encourage them to utilize it. And some of them, they are under stress and they also utilize this as a means to solve a problem. I don't see any way how this could actually do it. And in fact, what is proven from medical science, what is proven from the Quran is telling us more effectively what the Quran is saying is that the time you put this into your mouth, it affects your whole psyche and thinking. You no longer think what you're supposed to think. In other words, the problem, they just drop it with one drop of alcohol. And a new problem starts. So the problem you had, you put a full stop basically there, and you start a new problem. Shaitan now attacks you. The devil now takes control of you. And a new problem and a new issue starts. So this is not the same. So don't let anyone fool and say, well, that's going to take away or, or, or let the children be fooled into thinking that if you use alcohol, well, I'll get to relax and I'll be okay. It doesn't happen so. Or you say, well, I'll relax with the friends. And after that, after the friends were up and the problem went away, it never went away. So it says here that this is what it affects the way you think, feel, and behave. Thus, qualified healthcare providers should be able to dis diagnose and treat both the cause and the effects of alcoholism just like any other medical condition, if that could be done. So if you, a person is drunk, then they just go by the doctor and the doctor give them some medication for that and they could be good. If a person has fever, they could take a tablet and they got. Hopefully that tablet will help them remove the fever and the pain. But when you go to the Doctor for overuse of alcohol. Person can use alcohol till their entire stomach becomes inflamed. And when it becomes inflamed, you start to vomit blood. And such a condition that it treats you in a different format now to actually bring back that to a level where you can no longer be inflamed and you can actually start back eating and doing anything. But when, you, when you're in that state, you can't eat, you can't do nothing again. It's such a dangerous thing. Right? So medically, there are problems that when you're reaching that state, the doctors have to put you in a particular level to look at you and treat you. But that is the danger of what drinking alcohol, and we don't see it as a problem. In 1956 in North America, the Medical Association classified alcohol dependency as an illness, and in early 1990s, it was also officially classified as both a medical and a Psychiatric condition, alcohol depends, dep dependencies is diagnosable be based on the following criteria. This is how they could tell you when you are alcoholic and when you have a problem with alcohol. So bad news for those people who enjoy what they think is healthy, a glass of wine every day. You ever hear that story? People say they drink and they justify, say, well, a glass of wine a day can help you. As I say, just like the brick, you know, the straw, the water, and the sand, if you throw it on your face, it ain't going to have no effect. But you say, take, you just convert that straw and the block and the, water and the water and the sand, you convert it to a block and you bake it, and you crack somebody, the same thing. See the difference? That is a difference. So the same effect of alcohol, once it's fermented and it comes like that, no wine in any form, 
is good wine. Even if they say medically that is good for you, that is just business. That is just for the money. <coughs> if, you say, yeah, if you have the cold, take a drink and you can pass. You know, have a, cut the cold. You say cut the cold, right? Well, lime could do the same thing. You could use some other means if you want to. Go to the doctor and get some medicine for it. What is mentioned here and telling us about this disease, you know, is that, yes, you cannot use alcohol and prove it to be something that is good when Allah says in the Quran it is bad. And medical is also proven as being bad. The way it is perfected, the way it is produced, the way it is, this, you know, made into this, you know, so they call it this distilled. They say it is distilled, you know, not, not distilled. It's a process that they make it into, not really distilled. It's actually the same thing, right? It comes to the point that a large new global study published in last century has confirmed previous research which has shown that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. Whether it's one glass, one drink, a whole bottle, any amount is not safe. And scientists today have proven that it is not safe. Because its very nature of the way it is made is destructive. And it can destroy you. So the researchers admit moderate drinking may protect against heart disease, but found that the risk of cancer and other disease outweigh that protection. In other words, they're trying to save your heart, but your entire body burning down and being destroyed. So you might, you, might, you might say this, this is the one little percent that is good, but the next 99 destroying your entire body, mind, heart, soul, everything. Everything is gone. So what we are saying and what we are looking at here is that the, the, the danger involved in it is far way greater than even one sip. Medically proven as well. So the Quran gave this indication many years ago, but today this is what we are saying. So no one can come and tell you, well, you know, that one drink will be good for you. And no child or no teenager, no one should fall prey to this. In fact, the knowledge about it, should be, we should be fully aware of it. So it comes to the men that the development of the tolerance to alcohol that requires that the person drink more and more to experience the desired effect. So the more you drink, so you want to drink more because you're getting a different effect. So one day, one drink would work to give you a special effect. The next they need two to do the same thing. The next they need three. The next they need four. And from that four, you might end up with a whole bottle. Then you might need a whole case. And that end up reaching that state that person become totally alcoholic. Right? You see young boys and girls in many parts of the world on the street. Then they're drunk and they're alcoholic. And they're so intoxicated that people do them anything and all type of things. They can't even help themselves. Some of them, they walk and they, they, they urinate on themselves whilst they walk under the influence of alcohol. Far more for the amount of road deaths occur out of what? Drunk drivers. And amongst our teens as well. Because it slows their mind and their thinking that they are going slow, but they are going over 100 and, they, and they, or 200, 150 km, and they feel like that is like going to be 40, but that doesn't matter how much speed they're mashing the X up. They can control the senses in the foot. Time to mash brakes. They could barely lift the foot off the X. What is more dangerous is a person who is under the influence of alcohol and want to die in that condition. What is the state of that person who dies in that particular condition? The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us that while a person is under the action of a sin, a major sin. Whilst doing that, whilst in that state, they are considered to be where their iman has gone. Their iman has gone. And when they stop doing it, then their iman will return because that is not the quality of a believer. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made khamar, haram, alcohol, haram, drugs, haram, then we should not be using it. In our society today, amongst our youths, there's also substance abuse. And they say, well, from smoking, from 
they recall pan and different types of things that they will consume. They say, that is small thing, another head, I don't do nothing for you at all. That will nothing to you. But some people may be able to control that level, but there are other people who will not be able to control that. Right? And they use these things, but there's a great danger and a great effect on their lives. So the consumption by our youths trying all these things and today, you know, they smoke this hemp and then they smoke this pipe with the, the electronic cigar, we cigarette call it. Once that I smoked on you're driving down the highway and you see some people vehicle and they only smoke when they wind down the glass, they throw the whole vehicle on fire. Vaping the whole time, right? And the amount of vape and smoke coming out of the vehicle is surely vehicle overheating. But this time when you watch, it's some kind of glass thing that's pulling through and it smoke like that. So that, and they say, well, that's not, that not cigarette, and that's, that's a liquid they're using, different flavors and so on. The action and the imitation, the same effect will come on it. The same effect. Because you're doing the same action. It's the same action you're doing. So that leads a person on to something else when they cannot get satisfaction. These are the dangers that will come out of this. Behavior, behavioral change, you know, upon sensation of use of this, unpleasant mental physical and emotional withdrawal systems manifest itself. When a person drunk, you know what I tell everybody else? And especially the wife and the children, I do love you and you do love me and a whole other story starts there, you know that? You start to pull a silence, you start to vex with them, you start to quarrel with them. What they did you? What you do to yourself? So you come home angry because this, you, you can't function to start with. You can't do anything. You look at them and you're taking out your what? Inability to do anything on them. So you start to say, look at them, they don't love you anymore, they don't do this, they don't do that. And a whole set of range of mental emotions start to come into you and start to kick into you and you start to abuse your own family. This is what Shaitan do. He break marriages out of alcohol. He destroy many men and women because of alcohol. And today in society, if you watch most bars that you go to, the young women, Professional women are sitting and having a, how would you say, normal beer, having a couple of beer, two beers, they take a hard shot or two. And, they, and, and in, in the movies that you'll watch today, if you watch these movies, women are clinging to the bars today. You know, there was a different, many years ago, women who used to be in the bar was a different thing. Today, women who are in the bar, they look at a professional level. So, they will go to the bar not being professional. The system of the bars today, you no know, long time we have what we call rum shop. You know, rum shop was a different kind of thing. So now let's call it called a drinking hole or something. Like that. Let's call it water hole or something. Let's call it. But the 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 objective today is that they have transformed it. You know, make it all glittery. You know, young people want what? Flashing lights. They want this. The bar must look in a different way and it open. And they design the bar to cater for who? The young people today, they attract them to come to the bar. To consume alcohol. To utilize drugs. Males, young boys and young girls, this is the environment. Professionals, you send them to school, they get an education, they get a good job. And then they take this good money and spend it away in the bar. In a casual evening. You go to some of the big malls where these bars are. The car park full. And the bars are also filled. Outside the bars are also filled. With young men and young women. The society have started to transform the business ideas and the way they try to attract and pull people to the is totally different. <coughs> so the question we should really ask ourselves, you know, who is in control when you are drunk? Who is in control when you are drunk? Shaitan takes full control over you. The devil gets full control over you. You're no longer in control. A person does anything. I'm going to wake up in the morning. What does he say? I never do that. Mash up three quarter house. Young children today, they smash their father's vehicles. Parents' vehicle, wake up and do nothing. They're in the hospital, how they reach here? They even know how to reach here. Alcohol take away their whole mind. Shaitan controls them over. They are taken over. 
and they, they operate totally different. That's when the devil gets in there. You know, really watch people when they get a zombie getting in how they behave? Drink alcohol, same thing. Just like how a zombie could behave. You know, we have a zombie inside here, what happened? Well, alcohol, when that zombie gets inside here, that devil. And you know, really and truly, some of the advertisement actually proves and they say it is what? A spirit, a devil. And they have no shame about it, you know. They advertise it as what? A spirit. It's a spirit. So, in that, there's family, adverse medical, physical, and social consequences that result from excessive alcohol use, such as mental illness and diseases. Now, in conclusion, we will close with you know, the biggest question we should ask ourselves. And the entire world and everyone who is viewing should also ask themselves this question. You know? The biggest question is that should be as if you know this is the, a disease. You know, if, this, if you know, for example, a, a, let me say the flu, swine flu passes through Trinidad, what do you think happened? The entire hospital, the whole medical system, the government, and everybody goes out of it. Make our, our big awareness of how to treat people. They will bring in so much medication to start to treat people because they don't want nobody to what? Die. They want nobody to die. And if one person dies from swine flu, all the papers have it. But every day, almost every week, somebody dies of an accident from, or some related thing with alcohol and nobody says nothing. Can't make the papers. Even the fine writing can't even make. So if we say that this is a disease and more than three quarters of the world or half of the world using alcohol and drugs, and it's a disease. We ask ourselves and we should really ponder and think, you know, why promote and sell this disease? Why spread this disease? Why sell sickness? If you could do it for all the other disease and sickness, why are you doing it for this one? Why promote this one rather than what? Prevent people from getting sick. Why not prevent people from using drugs? Why not prevent them from using alcohol? Who benefits? Who benefits out of the use, the distribution, the sale out of alcohol? The fellows who own the shop, they get in this. They're like pushers too. They're doing the same job. And when they legalize alcohol and marijuana and so on, well, we have a marijuana shop. We might have a different kind of different design for that one. I know they might have to hang up upside down or something and smoke or sniff or something, but that's what's going to happen. Eventually, our society has become sick and it's diseased. If they knew and they're actually saying that this is a disease and you say we prove this is a disease, why sell a disease? You know, then the whole world and all these scientists and all these doctors and the governments and the, the leaders and everybody has to be mad because nobody will sell a disease, nobody will sign, sw sell swine flu or AIDS or some other disease or contracting all kinds of different things. If you know you're getting cancer out of alcohol and smoking, if you know you're going to get different types of disease and ulcers and all the, these things come out of alcohol, why sell the people this thing? Why? So, in our next class, inshallah, we'll come to us too. Why, inshallah? Let's make dua. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam anta ba'a ruhta ya adal jalali wa likram. اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفينا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد بارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا على النار فسبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إني ألقى الإناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات جميع الطاعات إني ألقى